Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to another episode here. My name is Dominic and I am the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode we went ahead and built out a little bit of a view model here, also our repository class, not making use of it, but more importantly in our view model here we have a live data that we have connected up to our activity and specifically to our data binding instance here. So if you missed it, go ahead and check it out. It's a pretty good introduction to data binding and I'm excited to continue using it in this series here. So let's continue this MVVM architecture decision, so to speak, and bounce on over to the repository. So if you remember this from the first episode here, we had a pretty basic, um, I'm just gonna pop this in the init block so that it stops freaking out. Um, but we had a pretty basic implementation here to get our database and then get a particular reference to our database and then listen here via the value event listener uh, for specific changes in our data snapshot. So if we bounce on over to the Chrome here where we have the uh, Firebase project up and running, previously we did not have anything other than the message key here, uh, but I went ahead and off screen just added in the news feed screen or the news feed uh, element here, which just has two elements underneath it as we can see here in the structure. And each one of those elements follows a pretty uh, simple format right now where it has an identifier and then it has a description and a title on each of the elements here. So we can start to kind of build out a little bit of a JSON response that we would expect if we were to see uh, or, or fetch a particular news feed. So we're going to go ahead and build this out a little bit as in each news feed item, but um, this will serve the purpose for now. So let's flip back over to the code here. And instead of looking at our reference here for message, we're going to look at news feed. That's going to give us this node here and all of the children within it. And then we can uh, still add the event listener here. And let's just go ahead and run it. I need to just one second, just create a, uh, an instance here so that the init block here of the repository runs. And then we also have the event listener uh, up and running here. So we're not really gonna pay attention to the UI at this very moment. I just want to uh, show us here how this news feed element is going to look inside of our console here. And as we can see inside of the logs here, we have a structure that looks something like what we had defined here in our uh, database, and that makes sense. But at the moment, we now have basically a string version of this entire uh, segment here. So we kind of need to do something about that. We need to be able to more or less parse each one of these items into a class here that we can then use uh, as a model to basically get some stuff on screen. So let's uh, very simply create a data class here that's going to just encapsulate and represent our uh, news feed item. And it's going to take a, for a second, it's going to consist of a title string, which we will default to uh, empty, and then also description here, which we will again uh, default to just an empty string. And so now we can actually make use of this snapshot here and uh, actually parse things out. What we can do here is we can create a, uh, let's say a list of items, right? So let's say, well, let's be good with it, news feed items here. And this is going to be a list of news feed item. And we can set that equal to our snapshot.children.map here. And we're going to go ahead and map each one of these snapshots, uh, essentially each one of these uh, particular nodes here of the children of this news feed node. Uh, we're going to map each one of these to the domain layer object. Now there is fortunately something that we can uh, make use of here from the library. So if we call it, well, let's say, uh, let's give it a name here, data snapshot, so that we can say data snapshot dot get value, and we can pass in a particular class here that basically mimics the structure of the uh, element that we have here inside of uh, the, the children array here. And this is just complaining because we have uh, found a nullable item. We're gonna go ahead and force that to be non-null. And then basically at this point here, we can go ahead and just copy and paste this. And instead of snapshot, we'll say items. And then we will simply just say newsfeed items dot to string to just go ahead and print it out here. So if we go ahead and rerun things, we should see basically the, uh, the data snapshot printed out here. And then we go ahead and parse each one of the children in that snapshot. And then we just print it out to the screen here or to the console. 
And we can see that here as well, right? So we have the snapshot. Again, we have our little JSON snippet here that mimics everything in the database. And then more importantly, inside of the items, we now have a newsfeed item with two, uh, well, I guess an array or a list of two newsfeed items here that go ahead and just uh, basically map to exactly what was inside of our data. Okay, now one thing I wanted to point out here, I've gone ahead and hit a breakpoint inside of uh, basically the statement where we were logging things out. And if we take a look at our newsfeed items here, which is the list of newsfeed items, we can see here that they are indexed at zero and one. There's two elements that make sense. And then if we look at the actual data that's associated with each element, we see one that says title, title two, description two, and then title one, description one. Now this ordering inherently doesn't make sense, right? We would assume that, you know, the title one and description one would be the first element in the list and, you know, that these elements would basically be reversed, right? And if we could imagine hooking this up to a recycler view, which we will get to shortly, this element here with title two is going to come first and then title one. So that doesn't really make sense uh, right off the top of your head. Um, however, if we take a look at the newsfeed structure here, each one of the elements inside of the newsfeed has just a unique identifier. We went to generate a random UUID and use that as a unique identifier. Uh, and then, unfortunately, there is some inherent sorting that happens here with these different IDs for Firebase to come up with the ordering uh, you know, by default, so to speak, right? So this one starts with F4, and then this one starts with F7, so we can understand why uh, this element here is at the top of the list. So one thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do here is I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, a rank field. I'm actually gonna see if they let me do this, but it's going to start with an underscore rank, and then we're gonna give this one a value of two. It looks like it's okay with it. And then we can go ahead and apply that same exact element to the second one in the list here, which is going to have rank one. And the reason that I've gone ahead and put this underscore here is because I don't necessarily want this element to be a part of the data model for our structure here. So flipping back to the code, I'm gonna let that run. Uh, it's picking up all of the edits that I had made. Um, so if we go ahead and take a look at this reference up here, we say database.getReference, we pass it a path. Then what we can do here is call, I believe it's, yeah, order by child. And then we can pass uh, something here to it. And so we're going to tell it, order the children by the rank field, essentially. So this doesn't have to, this means that we don't have to change our implementation here, right? This implementation is simply just parsing each element and then printing each element out. Uh, but as we saw before, we know that, that it is somewhat out of order. I mean, it's in order, but it's out of order in the way we would want it to be. So by adding this additional rank field here, we can go ahead and take a look at our output here. And as we see down here, uh, we now have the one that says title one uh, in front, and then the newsfeed item here with title two is in the back. So we can, you know, essentially apply a little bit of a ranking here to these elements so that basically our code will put that in a different order than we might see in this list here. And this is reasonably powerful just because, uh, you know, it gives us the power on the back end, so to speak, to uh, update basically the ordering of how these elements are going to be uh, displayed or not. If we were to go ahead and update this one to be rank four and we hit enter, we clearly see that something has been changed. We can also take a look here um, because in our logs again, because we have this uh, value event listener, it, this data on data change function was triggered again, everything reran, and now we can see in our items here that title two is the one that comes first and then title one comes after that. And again, that is just because two comes before four um, you know, so basically we can control how we want to display these things by altering data here and not having to change any of the code or any of the implementation inside of our actual project. Okay, so this is a pretty powerful implementation at the moment. We have a way to listen to a particular node in our database. We have a way to order it and we can basically hook this up to the traditional MVVM pattern and get, uh, get a live data propagated with the information here that we parse in the on data change. So give me a second, I'll get this cleaned up and we'll go from there. All right, and we are back here, folks. Let me just take you through the changes that I made. Inside of our activity here, we cleaned things up a little bit. We got rid of some commented out code here and we basically just told our view model here, fetch news feed, which inside of the news feed view model here, we have our private live data instance here uh, that we can go ahead and manipulate with the immutable live data. And then we have a public newsfeed live data 
that is just of type live data and it points to the contents here of our mutable list. And this is a pretty popular pattern, used it before on the channel, but basically this is so that anything that uh, observes the newsfeed live data doesn't have the power to actually change it. Uh, and then quite simply here inside of our fun, uh, fe fetch news feed function, sorry, a little bit of a tongue twister there, we invoke our repository to fetch the news feed here, passing in our mutable live data. And if we take a look at this here, our repository has everything it needs. So it has the database reference, it has the news feed reference here. And then when it is told to, it goes ahead and actually uh, attaches to the news feed reference here, orders by child again of the rank, and then we add the value event listener here. As we saw before here, we just simply parse the information that we get in the on data change. And then instead of printing it out here, we are posting the list to our live data, which will then trickle all the way back up to uh, essentially this variable here, whoever is observing it, and uh, and go from there. So uh, otherwise, though, inside of our layout file here, I've just gone ahead and created a basic recycler view here. Um, and you might be wondering, well, we've used epoxy before, and epoxy is really powerful, especially if that's part of the reason you have uh, came to the channel in the first place. And I do agree, epoxy is amazing, and it's uh, it really is uh, amazing. It, it, that's it. Uh, but I've decided to go ahead and do this season here with a recycler view so that we can go back to the uh, the bare bones, the roots here, uh, the under the hood workings of the uh, epoxy library, and we can implement things with a recycler view. So maybe a little bit of a change of pace. If you haven't implemented a recycler view before, uh, this will be a pretty good uh, tutorial of how to use that. And then inside here of our data tag, we have the view model that just points to our newsfeed view model. So we're gonna go ahead and in the next episode, make use of this list here of live data to go ahead and basically connect that up to the recycler view, get some stuff on screen here, uh, because at the moment it is just a blank screen, uh, which is good because it doesn't mean it crashes, but it also doesn't do anything at the moment. So uh, we'll need to fix that. So if you made it this far in the video, please drop a like. It does really help me out uh, and the channel, and I would greatly appreciate that. And if you have made it this far and notice you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on anything that is to come here. Uh, and that's it for me, guys. Have a good day. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.